Hello, this is Mrs. Teal. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to paint tree silhouettes over a landscape. First, let me explain the materials that I'm using, and I'll place links to all of these items from Amazon in the description of this video. I'm using Canton's cold-pressed watercolor paper, the heavyweight 140-pound kind, and a set of 16 praying watercolor paints. I'm using golden talcon brushes, and this set I have has both round and flat, as well as different sized bristles. I'm using some artist's tape, and you'll see how I use this to get nice edges along the edges of my paintings. You could use masking tape instead if you need to. I'm using Speedball Super Black India ink, and I also have ready some paper towels as well as a cup of clean, cool water. Now to get started, I highly recommend you begin by just observing trees and if necessary, print out some pictures or use a computer or your phone to find some reference images. Then practice first painting the silhouettes of your trees on some paper, not on top of your watercolor landscape yet, just practice first on paper. So I'm going to start with a size one brush. This is a thin round brush and I'm going to use this first so that I can paint the thin branches and get the most precise details. And then when I'm ready, I can take one of the larger brushes, like a size five or six, and paint inside the trunks and fill in those thicker areas. Now when using India ink, the ink should flow like black paint. It should be ready to use, but if you need to thin it out some, you can add some water to the India ink as well. And what I do is I just mix it with some water on the lid, which I use as a palette of my watercolor paint set. Now India ink is very dark and it will stain, so keep that in mind as you're using it. Be aware of your surroundings and make sure that you don't accidentally knock it off of your table. To begin, the trunk of the tree is the thickest part of the tree, and all of the branches that connect to the trunk will be the second thickest areas. I like to begin with the trunk first. Think of each piece of the tree, each limb, as a cylinder. When you're painting an area that's thicker, you can always just start with the two edges and then you can fill it in later with your larger brush. Now, if you're looking at a real tree right now, either in real life or in a photograph, I'm sure you're noticing that the lines you see on the branches are not straight. They're actually quite wiggly and jagged. So when you paint the lines of your tree branches, you want your lines to be shaky too. So if you can slightly shake your hand as you work, that'll give you a more natural looking branch. You also want to thin the branches out as they get further away from the trunk. Every branch as it gets towards the outside edges of your tree should get thinner and thinner. Barely touch your paintbrush to the paper when you want to make these thin branches. Let the paint almost just run out on you. Lastly, fill in the trunk and fill in your lines between your thicker branches. You can do this with a larger sized paintbrush or just with your size one or two. Now, before painting a tree silhouette over a watercolor painted background, I would recommend practicing a few more times. Practice with different styles of trees too. Trees that have leaves as well could be very interesting for a silhouette. When you're finished practicing, you're ready to begin painting your watercolor landscape. But first, use your artist's tape to help separate some sections of the paper. I can create three windows on this sheet of paper. Each piece of artist's tape is about two inches apart, so the spaces that I'm painting my landscapes in is actually very small. Later, when I remove the artist's tape, 
I will be left with very clean white frames around the painting. And that is the area that my silhouette of my tree will overflow into. You can see the end result here on the left. So, in this example that I'm working on with the blue paint, I'm creating a simple sky. I use just blue paint and I blotted off some areas to expose the white paper beneath and make it look like clouds. Now for the center painting. I mixed green and brown paint together and I'm going to just create a wash of this color over the whole space. You can see I even took my paper towel and pulled the paint down just to coat that area. And in the right side, I'm mixing yellows and oranges and even some purples to create what will look like a sunrise. This is just the base layer of these three paintings. Once they're a little more dried, I will go over them and add some additional pieces of land or more interest into the sky. Next, I'm going to create some land formations in the left piece. I'm mixing together a shade of blue that's darker than the background. This is going to be an area of mountains or land that is far away. I'm going to have one more area of land that will be placed in front of this, and that one is going to appear darker in color. Something to remember is that land in the distance looks lighter in color than areas that are closer to you. So when you want to show depth, make each area of land that is getting closer to you darker than the one behind it. And I'm going to make it look like these mountains or hills are reflecting into water. So I'm using that color of blue and just creating some horizontal lines to look like ripples in the water. I'm going to create a similar kind of landscape in my middle piece. So I mixed together green and brown again, but this time made it appear darker than the area behind. And I'm going to continue to layer some land, getting it darker in color as it gets closer to the foreground or front. I'm mixing in a bit of blue as well to add some darkness. You could use some black, but I would avoid black and personally save it for only use in the silhouette. Remember that silhouette of your tree will be painted on top of whatever it is that you're painting in this landscape. As you see me add this third layer of land, most in front, you can really see the atmospheric perspective. And again, what that is, is that illusion that things that are further away from us appear lighter in color. Now onto my last sky, my sunrise on the right. You can see I'm using that paper towel to make sure that I keep my colors clean since these colors are so different from the colors I used in the other two pieces. I'm adding in some more of the purple and the orange and the yellow, just getting a little bit more contrast, getting a little bit more vibrancy. And then I'll just blot some areas up with my paper towel or add some more water to help it blend. Now, once all of the paint is dry, I can remove the artist's tape and I always remove it at an angle. This helps not to tear the paper. So watch as I pull, I don't pull straight up. I actually pull the tape towards the side so that I'm making a 90 degree angle with the tape. And this helps not to tear the paper. I pull slowly and if I notice the paper starting to tear right away, I'll stop and begin taking the tape off from the other side.
As soon as your tape has been removed, you're ready to paint your trees. Go ahead and watch as I paint mine. I make all three different so that each of these three paintings is unique. When finished, these paintings could be displayed together as a triptych or cut into individual works of art, used for display in a room or even turned into bookmarks. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Again, all of the products used are linked in the description of this video. And if you are interested in seeing more art demos and tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.